Levanta. Looks like you and I are the first people here to sign up for the uh, uh, open Q&A today. Um, I know that we're expecting a few other people. We always have some uh, other attendees join us. So we're going to get started at the top of the hour. But do you have any, any topics or any questions that you want to make sure we cover in today's session? Please let me know. I'm just going to um, check that chat box. If you do, pop it into the chat. Hi, Ivy. Hi, Francine. Thanks for joining us. Uh, Lavanda, um, you know what? Go ahead and use the chat box for now. Um, we'll unmute mic microphones later. Um, I'm actually not moderating today. I'm just going to be hosting later. Um, but if you have any questions, pop them into the chat box and we'll make sure we work them into the webinar today. Hello, everybody. Welcome for, to the uh, webinar. It looks like we've got a few people starting to log in. We do have about four, maybe four and a half minutes before we're going to get started. So uh, you do have time to maybe wrap up that last minute email or text message, and we will get started momentarily. I know that we're expecting probably an, at least one more um, uh, trainer in, so definitely uh definitely going to have some friends and colleagues here today and we'll be keeping an eye on that chat box and any questions that come in i'll make sure we'll try and answer those for the day all right we're going to get started in about four minutes
Hello, everybody. Welcome to the KB Core Open Q&A and Next Level Strategies webinar. My name is Kelly Bajarski. I will be your trainer for today's session. I have invited um, a, a special guest. She was out yesterday, but she's going to be joining me today because we have a fun topic to go over today. And uh, so Annalisa will probably jump in and help me out momentarily. And if not, I've still got some really great tricks up my sleeve here. Uh, Christian, thanks so much for moderating today. No worries there, Kelly. How's your day going? My day is fantastic. It's a nice, blustery, rainy day here in Southern California. We can mm -hmm. always use the rain. Yeah, yeah, most definitely, most definitely. So uh, just a, a quick reminder for everyone here. If you guys do have any questions while we wait to get started here, you can use the Zoom chat or Q&A tool. Uh, you can also raise your hand uh, and just giving everyone a heads up too, you might get voluntold on today. I know <laughs> Kelly likes to pick on you guys. I do like to volunteer and volunteer people. <laughs> yeah, exactly, exactly. So I'm excited to, to see what we have on the agenda for today, but keep in mind guys, today, this meeting is going to be recorded. I'll have a copy of this recording for you guys available through our Google Doc spreadsheet here, which I'm gonna share with you guys right now. And uh, also we're gonna be putting these recordings up on our YouTube channel so you can view it for later. Uh, with that being said here, Kelly, should I just pass it over to you? It looks like you've already taken the, the screen share there. Yeah, I have. I hope you don't mind. I jumped right in. I, I got in a little early and there was a couple of us here already logged in. So we're already seeing some questions coming in. Uh, awesome. Christian, you want to tackle the first question before we go into our straight topic today? Because I know that uh, Lavanda has been patiently waiting. She uh, had a I question don't here. see the question. I'm sorry. Her question is, um, she tried to get keywords added when setting up her listing alerts by sending okay. in an MLS data input sheet. On uh -huh. a previous webinar, that's what she was instructed to do, but then support doesn't seem to think that that is exactly what needs to be done to add keywords to listing alerts. You want to walk us through that, Christian? Well, from my understanding, uh, that's kind of exactly what the support team would need is that MLS data sheet in reference to the listing and the keywords. Specific data points in reference to the keywords uh, are usually labeled or at least categorized in those data sheets, which is therefore then brought into the MLS feed. So therefore, we need that data from the sheet there passed over. And as long as it has those key words, it has those references on there, we should be able to pull those in. And that's what is required from support. But other than that, is there, is there another way to maybe handle this? Well, Kelly? you know what? And hey, Annalisa, thanks for joining us. I know you just popped in and um, we're going to get started on our fun, fun and festive um, holiday <clears throat> yes. uh, session yeah, I'm, today. I'm but warming up my voice. I'm warming there. up my singing voice. Yes. <laughs> We're going to do a little Christmas caroling, right? Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, but before we do that, LaVonda had a question about listing alerts and getting those keywords Oh, added. yeah. These are groovy. I love these because you can add them on your keywords here and you can add them on your website, which is something a little different, but serves a similar purpose. So whenever you're creating a listing alert, you can click edit right there as Kelly is so lovingly and hovering over, or maybe Christian is. I don't know. Uh, but when you click on keywords down there towards the bottom, like that third section down, you can actually add in information like accessibility, which is a huge factor anymore. Uh, you know, and what this will do is it'll bring in the matching filters depending on your MLS if it has a matching filter. So, like for mine out of Jersey, I might be like, "Hey, what's the water situation like? How? What's the parking? Is it covered? Is it paid for? Is there one or two spaces at waterfront features?" And then, like Kelly's put up here, is waterfront features. Okay, what type of waterfront feature? So you can add these little guys in directly right here and we pull that content directly from the MLS of which you are connected. So now, this shouldn't be something that they should have to submit an yeah. MLS data sheet for because what happens is these keywords are pulling already from your existing MLS. What you do need to know, however, LaVonda, is you need to know what those fields are in your MLS. Yeah. And so if it, yeah, if it's an entry, if it's already a field in your MLS, um, you should be able to pull that keyword in from that field and then the associated yes or no, um, like, like pets, so if I did yes or no, things like, like pets, that. Yeah. yeah. So if I typed in pets, um, pets allowed, yes or, or no, HOA you only have, or whatever. Yeah. Mm -hmm. This is pulling directly from my MLS. So LaVonda, if you're not seeing a, 
uh, field there, just double check and make sure that you're entering at it as, um, as if you were searching for it on that data sheet in your MLS. I do want to add in that, like if you go up towards the top there where you look at the types of listings, listing types right there, that first line. So I have run into a couple of instances where people may work more of a recreational uh, vacation home area and things of that nature. And sometimes our feeds don't automatically bring over RV park, recreational, uh, timeshare, things of that nature, which might be really big in your area. And I think like the biggest one I can think of would be like probably like Sun River, Oregon or Lake Tahoe or, you know, more touristy type areas where people go for fun and vacation and sun. Mm -hmm. um, but so if you find a type that is not hitting, then of course, yes, talk with support on your listing types to say, hey, can we see if we can push have this pushed over? Uh, but when it comes to keywords specifically for something that pertains to listings, and their uh it should be mall. exactly <laughs> this is what you would use That's and it my should French yeah it day. absolutely should be searchable here from yeah. because it's pulling directly from your mls now these options just as the types sometimes you don't see things here either or it's not listed as readily available in your mls and if you don't see something in the options i always say search it as a keyword because it's probably going to be found there um, or see if you can't submit what that is, that option is, and see then if support can't help yeah. you out. Yep. But yeah. And Annalisa, since you mentioned the websites, do you want to talk about where to add that in there? Yes. So let's take a trip on over there to that left hand of KB Core and hover over Web and IDX and then go down there to settings and click on website settings. And then from here, we're just going to jump to the bottom and click listings at the bottom of that left index. And what you'll see here are these are the types served that are coming in specific to the MLS or MLSs of which Kelly's demo account is connected. So currently she has opted to only have the, the system show single list, single family, condos, townhouses, multifamily, rentals, residential, and coming soon. She can always come back in here and drop in any of these other factors and then click save or remove other ones. Uh, but this is where you're going to handle the type of listings coming onto the site and being shown. And this also might tell you why you have different results showing when some, you know, you do a, a listing alert for something and you see alert, uh, you know, in there, and then maybe it's not the same when they see the final uh, outcome because of the different types of filters, listing types, keywords, and so forth. So these, all of these things work together in, uh, in symphony to pull in data. Got it, got it. So Levada says, for example, I tried searching brick front under exterior features and it's not listed. So Levada is, uh, if I'm understanding it correctly, then what you're saying is that when you go to set up a listing alert and you're using the keyword search um, and you're using exterior features, it's not, brick front is not showing up in the dropdown. Is that correct, Levanda? LaVonda. Exactly. Hey, LaVonda, I'm going to jump into your dashboard uh, on my side because, you know, I got the tools. Uh, and uh, my last question is, LaVonda, I have two, actually, it's kind of weird. I have two LaVonda Gilcrests in KB Core. What are the odds? Uh, one of them is LaVonda Sells Homes. The other one is LaVonda at the Collective RE. So just let me know which one that is, and I'll jump into your account. And so while um, Annalisa, thank you so much for, for troubleshooting that for Levanda. I'm sure she I mean, really you know, it. I got you. So <laughs> I'll get started on our topic of the day. Oh, and then wait, wait, we can, wait. Oh, did you find you, it? No, no, no. I want to give you a buildup. Oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh I okay. don't want a lot for <laughs> Christmas. There is just one thing I need. <laughs> Give me snow on my website. <laughs> oh my gosh, Going you're awesome. To the evergreen. You know there what? We, we are so, we are celebrating the holidays early here at Inside <laughs> Real Estate. We are going a little cuckoo for our cocoa puffs today, and and we're having a lot of fun. Yay! Jessica applauds you. I give you a hearty round of applause myself. So today's theme, honestly, I have been feeling very much in the holiday spirit myself, and I've been trying to think of ways that I can do some fun and creative things that might maybe deck the halls of my website or have a little bit more fun using some of the tools in KV Core to do things that you wouldn't ordinarily do. And this is the time of the year to spread some cheer, right? So I used this and I didn't use um, anything that you don't have readily access to, except for maybe a Google form. 
because I did use Google Forms. Um, and I pulled in some pictures of my own and I spruced up my website. And as a reminder for those of you that are new to KB Core, you can access your website right here underneath the um, little hidden menu under your name under the upper right corner. And when you click on this little globe, that's going to take you to your personal website. So my personal website is already pulled up here. And lo and behold, after sprucing it up and decking those halls, we have a snow flurry going on. We have a snow flurry with a warm, cozy fire. Christian, doesn't that make you just want to settle up underneath the fire and look for a new home? <laughs> Got some uh, marshmallows and s'mores hot and we're ready maybe? to get this going. Yeah, maybe, maybe exactly. Hot exactly. So we I just did a couple of things here and it was fun with Annalisa. We added some snowfall that would um, overlap and overlay on your entire first page. I went in and changed the theme. My theme is normally a, a navy blue um, background. And so I added some changes there. And uh, I did add in a beautiful Yule, Yule log, the ever running looping Yule log. And I also added in a fun holiday page with a little game that we're going to play, as well as I updated the uh, website um, line here. Um, gosh, you know what, I think if I'd given been given a little bit more time, I probably think of some other fun and creative places I could add stuff. Last week we talked about using the profile page to add in some video to your profile section here. You could certainly update a, a nice warm holiday message here as well. And of course, don't forget to blog about all these changes that you're doing. When you update and create anything new on your website, let people know about it through a blog post so that you can get that out there onto all those search engines. So. Annalisa, I know that, mm -hmm. uh, thank you, Stephanie. I do think that's beautiful. And I would be remiss if I did not give credit where credit is due because Annalisa um, is definitely the, the powerhouse behind the oh, snow. Thanks. I added the, the, the fireplace, but uh, let me send you, uh, doo -doo -doo -doo. Annalisa, you know what? Can you uh, chat me your uh, your page because I'd like to show them what your page looks like too. Yeah, this was lovely. And I'm also going to drop the link to the article that we just had published today. It's so amazing. We got this amazing gal and um, in our support team operations who actually writes the articles for us. And I took, I sent her this information today, like, hey, we need this as an article so everyone can enjoy and learn how to do this. Uh, yep. So she got it published already. And I just dropped the link to the article. Oh, we both uh, in, did. In chart, we did it at the same time. With everyone. So there we are. Jinx, yep. you owe me a Coke. All right. Jinx, you owe me a Coke. Um, and we'll so walk you through how fun. to do it right here as well. But um, yeah, yeah and I definitely nice want to show site. off your page. Yeah. Here it is. Oh, I found that. it. Never mind. I okay. found it. Hang on. Okay. I guess I'm as not as quick as I was in the old days. I'm just all cozy around that fire. That's what it is. So Annalisa decked her halls as well, and she added some snow, and she added some, um, oh, I don't know what happened to your gingerbread house. Gingerbread. It'll take a second sure. for them to load. Whenever you're looking at video on Zoom, it kind of takes a second for it to load. Uh, it's how do they how do we get through? Oh, we how can show you how to change yep. the yeah. We can show you all. We're that gonna go through all there. that stuff. Yep. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's we'll just it waiting for to, to get the cache update. If you look to the bottom left of your screens, Kelly, it's oh, waiting it for that cache. So it's basically yeah. just between us, Zoom, Comcast and the internet gods, uh, what's happening here. I'm telling you right now, I'm <laughs> going to blame Amazon because Amazon's apparently having some troubles today. So I'm going to blame everything on Amazon. Um, I like there it. it is. There's, there we go. Isn't that pretty? I love it. OK, so let's walk through this. And I do have a doc that I'm going to share with you guys as we go through some of these things about how to deck the halls using KV Core. And I'll update yep. and add that, um, that doc on how to add the snow as well. Um, but we did, you know, I'm just trying to think of some fun ways to bring uh, the holidays to your website and lead generation using tools in KV Core. So one of the things I did uh, to change the customization of my website is I did change the color scheme to red. You could choose any other holiday colors you like, and you can do this by going to the web and IDX section of your KV core. And this is in the edit settings. And it's one of the very first things you're gonna see here as you start to, actually I'm gonna make this a little bit wider so I can see my uh, scrolling, scroll right down here to where the template theme is. And you're gonna choose a new primary color. Now, if you happen to know what your hex, or your is it the hex code? Is that what's called, uh, at least yeah. the hex code? So your you RGB there, number. Yeah, you can use RGB or you can see that teeny tiny arrow down at the, just next to the B. Oh, yeah. You then go. you can use that and go to your hex code or your oh, there it is. There's your hex code. So, so if you want to use a, a hex code, yeah. you can do that. Um, or RGB, you can plant the colors in here. Honestly, what I do is I just scroll around until I find the, the color that I like because I really am just looking for yeah. it. 
you know, a real pretty holiday color to use. And then you can swap the theme out. And then that will affect changes um, on the search bar, on the search banner, your chat with me. And it just gives it a nice little holiday appearance. It even mm -hmm. changed the background colors of the widgets because I'm using the custom modern side-by-side side uh, side side, uh, widget on my website. It's my favorite. So I do too. I think that one's really pretty. And I like how it just pops with color when I add that red. Um, you know, another thing you can do is you can uh, update the website title with a holiday greeting because your website title is what shows up right here. So happy holidays from your senior trainer. Do you know um, where else it shows up? Uh, I believe, doesn't it show up as one of the tags? Yeah, at the, at the tab. So if you hover over the tab, that will also be the message there. I love that. Yeah. Isn't it right there? Yep. yep it's so a twofer. So you get it there and in the middle. And you can change that by going, again, we're still in the uh, website uh, settings. settings page. And I'm just gonna use that uh, good old control F to be able to find something. And you're gonna go down to, you can type in whatever you're looking for. So what did I say it was the website title? Website title, there it is. And that'll pull up where it is because there's a long list of things you can do in here. Yep. And you can update this um, and click save. And when and you do that, Oh, sorry, go ahead. If you're using a Mac, it's control or sorry, command F oh, or, command or F. control okay. F for a Windows, but yeah. Okay, so we're going to do control, I can spell control F. C T R L F, yeah. Oh, yeah, C T. I know, Sam, see how bad I am? Control uh, I'm F here for you. plus <laughs> F uh, <laughs> to find, to find. And on a Mac, and I'll go back and make this look pretty later on a Mac. It's, what is it on a Mac? Command. Command. Plus Macs F. don't fool around. <laughs> you no, gotta command don't. it. And you gotta command that thing. <laughs> command plus F. Okay, so that'll be able to, so you can go in and you can look and find those things later uh, to upsa update those titles. Um, I started updating something else, but I lost my train of thought. So we're gonna skip right down into how to update the snow. And I will turn that over to you, Miss Annalisa. Tell us how to update the snow. Yeah, yes, so we're definitely going to share the doc. Don't worry. This was really fun. You know, last year I was talking with our uh, professional services department who creates all of the like uber specialized websites we have out there where you get creative control and, uh, you know, a couple of changes and all revisions and all that. And I was like, well, is, do you have any like fun stuff, like little Easter eggs? that I can share with everyone to kind of dress up and kind of have fun with their websites. It doesn't make HTML so scary. Like it's a nice, easy thing to kind of be like, hey, you know what? This is a breeze. I'm going to put it in there. Yeah. Uh, so he's like, well, we could add snow. And I thought that was pretty groovy. So he gave me the instructions last year and then I updated them for our new uh, dashboard instructions for this year, which is in the new article I just posted to everyone. And basically within that article, Let's uh, go to the want, article. Yeah, let's go to the article. It kind of shows you a snapshot of what my screen looks like. Uh, but this is how to add animated snow. So it kind of gives you the directions on how to get there on your dashboard, which we'll go over in just a moment here. Uh, but a little thing, it's on the second bottom of the second page right about there, where it says, then paste this code into the field. So you see where it starts with that little, uh, what is this, not a bracket, it's like a reader van sign, I guess. Uh, don't don't copy the save part. Just go to bracket to bracket or a little oh. wedge to wedge. Oh, to the script. Okay, yeah. we'll start at the back. Then we'll yeah, I'm going to have to have her edit that just to tip. Yeah, just to move it down because otherwise yeah. somebody's going to grab that and it's not going to work. But you're going to copy that section only, right? And then we're going to go to our KD Core dashboard. We're going to go, go like on the dashboard like you just logged in, please. Okay, because odds are that's where people are going to start. That's where people out. are going to start. Yeah. Yeah. So let's go down to Web and IDX on the left, hover over, and then hover over and click on Website Settings. And uh, Janet, we'll loop back to that side by side template. Now, to affect change, we're going to add that code to your header of your website. So you're going to do a Control F or a Command F if you're on a Mac and just type in header. And it pops you right down to where the header is. And right now, you can see here that she has a Winter Wonderland script in here. That's basically what the snow script is. So what she could do is all you should have to do is if it was blank, let's just say she got here and there was nothing there, she just paste in that code, click Save, go back to her website, refresh it, 
or open it up and it should be playing just like this. Yep. And then what I did just to give it a little bit more spruce it up is I thought, you know, I want a Yule log back there. So I'm definitely going to go in and just add in a YouTube video. Now, the thing is, when you add in video in the background here, a um, couple things you want to keep in mind and remember. One, it could potentially slow down the loading rate when somebody goes to, you know, goes to your website. So you never want to use that Yule log that goes for 10 hours. That's crazy. Don't do that. What you want to use is a really short video, yeah. something less than like 30 seconds. 30 seconds would be ideal. I found yeah. one on YouTube and it's just 55 seconds that was great and it seems to be working just fine so i put that link to this um youtube to this i just googled you know i just youtube facebook burning short video and found it but i'll put the link in the uh in the article that i'm gonna send out to you guys too i'll put it in i the can chat probably get it added then. to the article article too oh yeah let's do that yeah um but the only thing that you need when you're using this on the background of your of your website because there's lots of information here, right? Sometimes you might want to share it out onto one of these social media platforms. If you want to embed it as its own page, you could use the embed tab. We don't need any of that. The only thing, we don't even need this big whole URL link up here. The only thing we need is the YouTube ID, okay? So that's going to be everything after the equal sign. Everything after the equal sign is called the YouTube ID. And you're just going to copy that and then mm -hmm. go back to your... KV Core plus your dashboard and we're still in those website settings yep. of your web and IDX and you're going to go I believe it's up here at the top but we're going to go to I you. just do background oh there you go let's, let's I do back. back with GE yeah and it's in like two or three down it takes you right to that video yep. I just use the down but arrow on the tool at the top see those little arrows that go up and down on background oh. up there Oh, is it takes yeah. you to the next one? That oh, there jumps you, go. you. Yeah. Look at you teaching me all oh, sorts I know. of stuff. So there's the background YouTube ID. And all you do is pop that ID number in there right there. That's it. And click save. My, what I would always say is put your cursors on each end of the code to make sure you didn't bring any spaces over. Mm, because if you idea. did, it's not yeah. going to play. <laughs> like if I hit a space bar here, it's not going to work. Yeah. The only thing you need is what's up to here. That's a really good pro tip. Same yeah. thing at the beginning. Do the backspace button and make sure that you didn't do it there and then click save okay so when you do this it's going to then pull in on your website a, a youtube video and also keep in mind that if somebody searches your website from their mobile device we don't pull the video in it's going to pull in a snapshot of a thumbnail of someplace on the video it's usually at the beginning which is still okay for me because it's going to look something like this i'm going to squeeze this down and it's still going to have a little bit of the, the fire it's just going to be a picture of the fire but just keep that in mind that when you're using the youtube videos um it doesn't pull in the video when you're searching mobile yeah. on, your, on your website and i think something to also point out because someone was saying hey i don't have access to this stuff um do i need to ask my broker so depending on your brokerage and the parameters they may have opted to enact upon setup on launch mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. some agents may not have access to uh some of these or all of these little easter eggs uh that's so true that, especially if you have a customized website from your yeah, broker you don't want to be messing with that right so i think you know um if you don't have access you can ask them about it but it's probably done purposely because they either have some type of proprietary website configuration happening or something to do with their company and accessibility so these right. are things we can't supersede correct absolutely correct so that's just how we kind of spruced up a fun thing here you know change the this around you know i was even thinking because you can add a secondary logo mm -hmm. oh yeah that would be fun too wouldn't that be fun to put like a little postage stamp or something with you know uh north pole on it right there as a secondary logo because it'll show up right here next cute. to your coat your your uh your on your website next to your mm -hmm. primary logo so i'm gonna i'm gonna play around with that a little bit and see if i can't come up with a fun little um logo to add up there that might just be fun for the holidays now because you're doing this and it's a temporary thing this is not something we're going to keep up all year round right whenever you make these kind of changes this is why having a test lead on your website is really helpful at least for me and mine is billy madison my favorite test lead of all time and i'm always using him to go in and add in reminder tasks for me to do things so i'm right now going to go set up a task reminder 
for myself, and I'm using my test lead, Billy Madison, so that come probably January, I'm going to leave it up until about my birthday, which is January 6th. I'm going to leave it up till my birthday, till about one o'clock. And then I'm going to put a task reminder saying, you know, Kelly, update your website, right? Yeah, remove the snow. <laughs> remove the snow. <laughs> remove the snow. The thaw, is, the thaw is coming. Winter is coming, right? Remove the snow. So, you know, fun little pro tips here about using test leads. Oh, you got to give it a, t uh, a title here. Remove the snow. That'll probably remind, remind me to do it then anyway. So yeah. always a little two-part process whenever you're um, adding tasks and uh, whenever you're making changes and fun things like that. Now it's gonna be a task reminder that shows up on my dashboard. I'm still using KV Core. Now, um, the other thing that I did, which I thought was really fun, was I thought of different ways that I could provide kind of community outreach or something fun for the family and the holidays um, that allows people to use my website. Because remember, your website is your source of truth. Everything that you do, it's your own social media platform. You really can get creative on here. So I added a holiday info section here, a tab up at the top. I've got a holiday activities, deals in and around, and then uh, you could always you know, put your town in here. I put a fun little um, uh, list of a couple things to do in and around your town. And when you go to it, it's got this uh, quick little linked up um, uh, template that I did. These are all hyperlinks that link over to, uh, we have fireworks coming up in a couple of weeks. We've got free holiday photos with Santa. Each one of these are clickable links. And I did this, and you can go back and watch the YouTube video where Heather, Heather Bowden did a, an entire Next Level Strategies on how to use Canva to update and link over things. So if you want to, uh, you know, do something like this yourself, you can absolutely do that and create that in Canva. She's, she's you know, she's kind of one of the gurus of things like that. So you can add a custom page in here. Remember, those custom pages can then be used in a blog. They can be used in a landing page. They can be used pretty much anywhere. So one of the other fun things I thought we could do was maybe come up with some sort of holiday game. So I thought about using a landing page to do that. So what I did was I built out a landing page. Let's see if I can go in here and find it. Do, 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 do. There it is. So I created this um, holiday <laughs> cheer <laughs> reindeer games um, that you could use with emojis. Because how fun is this? Did you know you could put the emojis in the landing pages? This is oh, so, yes. uh, yeah. Yes. Uh, Heather Bowden, H-E-A-T-H-E-R, Bowden, B-O-W-D-E-N. And Christian, um, uh, I can add the link to the Canva, art, uh, the Canva uh, Next Level session she did. It was just a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, I got it. Don't worry, I'll, I'll share. Oh, you're the best. Um, so I did this fun little thing. Now, don't ask me how I got the snow in here, because to be honest, I have no idea that I have no idea how the snow popped up here, but it did. Um, but I did put in a little fun uh, photo in the background uh, and I did a quick little landing page. Now, am I going to get leads that are looking to buy real estate? No, I'm not. But am I going to get potential sphere of influence leads? You bet I am. And this is a great thing to introduce to maybe your farm. Put it in a group that you're a part of on Facebook for like a local uh, neighborhood that you're in. Maybe run this for the 12 days of Christmas and do a different one every single day. And, you know, when it shows up on your uh your Facebook page, remember, it's going to look a little different. It's going to look like this. Let me show you what it looks like. And I'm going to have to do a quick different share here. But because I did use a different background page, uh, a background picture, I used a custom background. I went outside of the box and I used a photo, or, uh, I created a photo again in Canva, super easy. And I just did a quick little thing there. And that header that I created this becomes the header for the advertisement. And the subheader becomes the um, first kind of the meta tag for that, for that particular uh, page or post. And I can put anything I want here to encourage people to sign up and um, take their guess. Can you guess what this emoji game is or this emoji holiday is? And of course, when somebody clicks, enters their information, let me go ahead and share again back here. So when somebody signs up and registers here on this website and clicks here for the fun, guess where they're going to go to? 
Well, I've created a Google Doc. I created a Google form actually, and we'll just pop in a phone number. Well, I probably, because I copied and pasted here. Let's try it a different way. Sometimes it doesn't like those. And it's taking me over to a Google form that I created and put in my holiday section under the holiday info. I put that um, Google form in the holiday emoji game. And now somebody can actually just create, fill out this form here. We all know that this was Rudolph. Did I spell Rudolph? Rudolph, the red nose reindeer. Rain, oh gosh, if I could only spell. <laughs> R-A-I-N. I know, I know. <laughs> <laughs> and when you submit it. And the beautiful thing is, is that even though the response has been here, anytime somebody goes, if you go out of this page, because it is a Google form, um, and if I go back into that page where it's stored, it does refresh back to the original page, which is kind of nice. So it does pop back in. So you can use this form, which by the way, Google Forms are kind of fun. You can use these to do, you know, holiday, or you could use them for buyer consultations, mm -hmm. uh, getting started to sell your home. I just embedded this form. You can put uh, it in a, a newsletter, a mass text, or actually a mass email, a scheduled mass email. I mean, it could be anything, mm -hmm. a custom mm -hmm. text code. Yep. And I, and I triggered it when I created the form. And if you've never seen Google Forms, Google Forms are part of the Google suite. And to create a Google form, it's fairly easy to do. And you can get really creative and we'll probably do a separate um, how to use Google forms if you want to embed those into your website later. But you can ask for emails and you can ask for phone numbers. You can make it mandatory. There's a lot of things you can do in here on a Google form. But the beauty is, is that once it's, it's created and you go to send, you have this embed code. That's what I took. I used the embed code for, uh, for this particular form. I just copied it. And then I went into my web and IDX and I created a custom page, which we've done on several different sessions before. So by now this should look familiar to you. And I went in and I just created a page and I used the embed code here to add in the Google form. Mm -hmm. And that's how easy it is. Create the And you title, could also, like if you wanted to put like your that. fire video in there, what, you, how would you do that one? If you wanted to add your fire video to that, that page. Oh, same way you because you can add source code to this, mm -hmm. you can change this and then go find your uh, embed code from your YouTube video. Remember, anytime you see those two little carrots that point away from each other. Yeah, that's the embed code. Just copy that. And it's already copied to the clipboard because YouTube's done it for me. And then I could go back in here and I could either put it up at the top mm -hmm. or I could put it at the bottom. Don't break it up and put it in the middle. That would be bad but I could yeah. put it here and it should add it in for me. Just on top of the other one. Just on top yeah. of my. Yeah, I so. love that. There we go. Oops, oh I, oh, I created a new one. I should have gone back in and edit. Let's go edit the one that I have, which is in my holiday. Do, 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 do. Did, I, did I lose it? It's on the next <laughs> page. There it is, holiday game, right there, right in the yeah. middle. Good, been a snake. Um, yeah, you hmm. just go right in here, and paste it in. We'll add in that little fire video. There it is. Click save. Give it a minute to update. Now, by the way, when you're creating custom pages or making changes to your website, don't panic if it takes a little bit of time. Okay. Because remember, it has to populate out onto your website. So, like, I'm not going to panic. The fire video isn't here yet. I'm going to come back in an hour and check it later. If it doesn't show up after a while, then reach out to support and see if they can't give you a little help. Maybe you refresh it a couple of times. Hopefully it'll pop up in here. So um, Christian, any questions coming in that we need to be mindful of? How are we doing so far? Uh, not too many questions, but Janet Ross just did ask, uh, did you use a custom page uh, to create that tab for the, the holiday info? So that was all done through that, right? Yes, as a matter of fact, I did. So what happens, these are navigation tabs up at the top and you can do a couple things with them. You can rename them or you can add your own tabs at the top. So I've added a, pay, a tab here, my own category called trusted service providers. And I've also added one holiday info. And it's the same thing as when you add these custom pages in here, once you mm -hmm. build the page, but it's a two-step process. So you have to build the custom page first and create a category for it. So for example, my emoji game, I chose an existing category that was there, but if you wanted to use it as a new tab, you could create a new one here, pick from an existing one. Once you've built this, 
then correct me if I'm wrong, Annalisa, it's yeah. also in the site con uh, the website manager under the settings. If we go back, edit settings. And it's down in, I'm going to do control F again and type in, oh, what is it? Oh, are you talking uh, to, to change your navigational pages? Yeah, navigation. Yeah, is it just yeah, I would just, I, yeah, I would just look for navigation. I just always, I just look for nav just go to, or, or yeah. carry, yeah. So if you go to it. the custom navigation, you'll see this is where you can change the name of the existing tabs you've got. And then if you scroll down here just far enough, you'll see here to select categories. Remember, you had to pick a category when you created that custom one or give it a new category name. You can add them in here and they'll become standalone navigation tabs. This is mm -hmm. how you add those. And, and you can just switch sure them out save it. anytime. Yeah, so at the end of this, I should probably add a task here to update my uh, holiday yep, info and yep, take yep. this out. So I'll just delete it out so that it doesn't show up anymore. Yeah. And when I save it, and then I go back here, if I refresh it, it should go away. And what's cool about this is when you think about different items like this that are seasonal, gone. you can go ahead and create all of this stuff ahead of time. Like mm -hmm. you're like, hey, I've got a half hour today. I got 20 minutes today. I can create this page and I'm going to launch this in, in for Easter. And then I'm going to knock out 4th of July. And you can just have all of these waiting for you, but just toggled off unpublished. Mm -hmm. And then, and then bring it back. Set yep, up a reminder, just... pop it in there. And then you can use all of that again and again and again over time. So Patricia is saying, how did you get the pages under the holiday? Okay, let's start from the beginning. Let me build one from the beginning and we'll just add a new one. Um, so I'm gonna go over to Web and IDX and I'm gonna build out a new page, a new custom page. And I'm going to click on, we'll set one something up for maybe Easter. We'll do like an Easter navigation tab. Yeah. And I'll say something like um, Easter egg yeah. hunt, Easter egg hunt, yeah. okay. Now, I could choose from a pre-existing one here, maybe add it to my holiday info. I could do that, but I wanna create a whole new one. So I'm gonna create a new category called spring holiday, holidays. Okay, that'll be my new category that I'm creating. Now, if I leave it alone and I don't create its own custom navigation tab, what's gonna happen is it's gonna show up in the resources tab right here. Because this resources tab is already pre-built for you and that's where, um, everything goes when they're not their own standalone navigation tab. So I've got a lot of different categories here, including that holiday one. It's mm -hmm. just showing up here as well. So I'm gonna, you'll see a new one. It's gonna be called Easter holidays. I'm gonna put that right there. And then I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna add in my photos. I don't know if I've got any pictures. So I'm just gonna always use my random cow picture because I just love my random cow picture. <laughs> It is random and this it, it is a kind of a random cow. So I'm going to put my random cow picture in here, maybe resize it, maybe add in some content about Easter, blah, 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 whatever you put in here. The, um, where does you the can, QR code take us? It better not be Rick Astley. <laughs> uh, you know what? That in and of itself is the mystery of the day, right? Okay. <laughs> so <laughs> um, you can, that's just a fun photo. Anyway, so again, you can, these custom pages can be linked out to other URLs or um, what we're doing, which is we're creating it on our page. So we're gonna skip all that. Um, the slug actually pulls from your uh, title. That is your slug, which is becomes uh, you know searchable on the internet. The meta tag is that two sentence overview of the page is what shows up in your Google search. Meta tags are what you can use to become searchable. So you could use like Easter egg hunt or holiday in this area. Spring in this area. Try to be specific and yeah. use like really local hometown information so that when people are searching that specific stuff, which they always do, it's going to increase the likelihood of your page showing yeah. up on their search results. And if you're not sure what it is, a meta tag is basically like when you go to the Googler and you see like those first two sentences under the description of the website. Mm -hmm. like, that's basically know, what that is. Sale in Corona. Corona. We'll just yeah. Pull a random one. See these pages so, yeah. down here? Pass the ads because they get more space. But in a regular, um, you see these two two sentences right here. This is what the meta tag is. Yep. The and the more meta tags you add, you know, within the custom pages or your SEO landing pages, which we've covered uh, somewhat recently, Christian, if you could drop the link to that in the doc as well for the follow-up. Um, I think when you start kind of looking at those keywords and how you can make yourself accessible to your entire community and beyond if people are looking to move to your area, you know, these little things and kind of zhuzhing up that search engine optimization just leads 
more and more judging. people back to you. I love the word zhuzhing, okay? That's the technical term, just so you know. Yeah. Because we're both techies around here, zhuzhing. Okay. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> um, so once you get this all set up, and honestly, it's, you know, adding the content is the hardest thing right there, just picking out the picture of your cow. Once you get that in there and you click save, now the custom page is built. You, now you have a new category. We've got it called Easter egg, whatever I ended up naming it. I can't even remember at this point. So we're going to go back and refresh it. We should be able to see it in here. Again, don't panic if it doesn't show up right away because sometimes it takes a little bit. There it is, spring holidays. So now we've got the actual category and we have my Easter egg hunt picture here, which is you know what I put on my page. There it is. Um, but if I wanted it to be its own standalone navigation tab up here. Now I've got to go back into that website setting that I just showed you before into Web and IDX again, edit your settings, go back to custom navigation, and then scroll down those couple of ways down here to where we were before. And we're going to add in that other new category we just built, which was spring holidays. Here it is. So now we're going to add in spring holidays and click save. And when we do that, now, again, you got to refresh it every time. Try looking at it incognito. Sometimes that works too. There it is. Now I've got my spring holidays there. I love it. There you go. And again, these are things that you can play around with and adjust. I don't want it here now. I'm going to put it in in the springtime. So I'm going to take it out. And I'm probably going to also go back into Web and IDX into those custom pages and turn it off because I don't want it showing right now. I want to wait until springtime. But again, this is the perfect opportunity to just sit down and, you know, think of some fun customization for your uh, for your website. Things just that you can do just temporarily. Things, you know, you know what it reminds me forever. of? Because hmm. I watched Christmas Vacation last night and I'm probably going to watch it again tomorrow because I love it. But it reminds me of the, the theme song where they're like, uh, let me think about this. Let's all deck the halls and light the lights. Yeah. <laughs> Hear the toasty it's fire burning bright. I it's know. It's kind of fun. that kind of fun stuff, right? Right. Exactly. It's not going to be here forever. It's just something fun and temporary. Now, yep. I am putting this doc together, um, and we'll. I'll make sure I update it and include the uh, and include the uh, the article that Annalisa mentioned. I yeah. even put in a couple of videos. There's the video for the fireplace. I found a fun one of horses having a snowball fight and it was like 35 seconds. <laughs> so you could use something like that. Yeah. Um, and then I also put some landing page ideas down here. So if you want that complete game with the emoji game, I found some really fun real estate ones too. So if you're doing, um, if you want to use that, that reindeer game uh, idea. I did put an emoji game in here and you're welcome to use any of these. Uh, so how fun would these be? You could do a whole real estate themed game. Is the third one down Goldilocks or three, three bed? <laughs> uh, three bed, one bath, shower oh, okay. home. Okay. How just fun. Just Curb checking. appeal. I know. I love this. Are you asleep right now? Wouldn't that be a fun text to send in a smart sleeping? campaign? Look at this list. Just, <laughs> are you sleeping? Look at this list. <laughs> well, yeah, because they don't creative. go out. They don't That's go right. out after office hours or before exactly. office hours. So exactly. <laughs> exactly. And you know who has some really fun emoji games? Etsy. Go find. You can find Etsy games like this all over the place. A not Etsy good property. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> Is that a handyman's? <laughs> that's a handyman's dream, is what that is. A not good property. There you go. But anyway, I hope you had fun with this, like we did. I know we got a little silly and goofy today, but did you learn something? Raise your hand if you learned something new, something that you think you might be able to put in your on your website. I always like to ask and see. Just a sh quick show of hands. Awesome. Hey, got a couple of hands going up. All right, so it's time for Q and A. What questions have we got? Anybody have any questions for us? Oh, today? Okay. Janet, <laughs> you both should go on Ellen's game show. This is one of her games. I mean, we'd probably laugh so hard. It might be dangerous. <laughs> um, be yeah, yeah, we'll keep we'll keep but, you posted. We'll if give we it do. a try, Jen, or maybe we'll do a uh, supermarket sweep. I mean, you know, we can yeah. Go. <laughs> there you go. All right, all right, guys. Well, I'm going to stick around in case anybody has any questions. Christian, uh, anything come in that I didn't see that maybe we need to to chat about? Annalisa, uh, thank you so much yeah, also for yeah. being part of today's webinar. Yeah, so uh, nothing too much has come in. Remember, guys, you can chat in your questions. You can also raise your hand uh, to let us know if you have any questions and use that Q&A tool. 
Um, but yeah, uh, this is this is pretty cool. I, I didn't really think that much about the the emoji side of things when it comes to the holidays, but I don't know, it was pretty fun. Yeah, it's a fun session. And Christian, I'll give you this doc. We'll make it shareable so everybody mm -hmm. can have access to it, and maybe we can add it to the um, to the video when we post it on YouTube, mm -hmm. and make sure everybody gets a copy of that. So Most that definitely. You can be able to add some snow. Add some snow at least. That's a fun thing. Yeah, that's really cool. All right. All right, well, I don't see too many questions coming in, but thank you so much and happy holidays. Merry Christmas, happy Hanukkah. Um, so glad you guys are part of our Inside Real Estate family team. And uh, Annalisa, always a pleasure. Yeah, Christian, of course. You're the best, you're the best. We're gonna this have is... the hap, hap, happiest holidays. Ask <laughs> the Tylenol, isn't that how we said it? Okay, yes, <laughs> get me a Tylenol. Oh my gosh. All right, guys. Well, that's all I have for you today. I'll stick around for another minute or two, Christian, if any questions come in. But if, if not, guess what? It's time to get off this webinar and go sell a house. Yep. Get off. That's right. Go sell a house, everybody. So uh, we're not going to be emailing this, Janet. Uh, what we will be doing here is there is a link that I just shared. That is to our Google Doc which will have all of the recordings there. And it'll also have those resources that Kelly and, and Annalisa provided here today. Uh, and also we'll have it go up on our YouTube channel. So what that means for you is you should subscribe to our YouTube channel as well. That's right. And if you haven't subscribed, this is where you get all those little inside nuggets here. You can mm -hmm. go right into our YouTube channel. It's stored right on this doc. Janet, make sure you grab it, bookmark it, save it, check it often. Yep. Um, if you're looking for something specific, you can search by date, you can search by trainer, by topic, and any tools that we used. So again, feel free to use this as your resource. We share this with all of our inside real estate um, users. So thanks so much for joining us. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. All right, I don't see any questions. Time to go, guys. Have a great day, everybody. See Happy you, holidays. Everyone.